of the Funk Brothers, mm -hmm. which is they brought people and did songs of the actual protagonist with secondary player or new generational players. Sure. Mm -hmm. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Did it give you a sense of that place of Laurel Canyon, which this gave you a sense of Hedra. Oh, for sure. And the sense of Leonard Cohen, his, um, his, his, his soul, if you will. Those places have a soul. It's interesting that you bring that up because I think that in films like Echo in the Canyon and, and even like Muscle Shoals, right? There's right. they it, these are demystifying places, right? right. Because they built and up in this mythology. It's Funk Brothers at the right. at the at the pit there where they're making all the music. Exactly, um, but you know, in in um, Marion Leonard, uh, um, you know, like it's deliberately mystifying. This place, right? Like yeah. they, they, like they could have demystified it and like and talked about, you know, how uh, like the the demographics of, of the island help influence their behaviors and things like that, or, or something, right. you know, it wasn't uh, something strange. Yeah, right. like the, 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 right. there there wasn't there wasn't like an empirical um, driven narrative in the right. way that like there's, they, they are in like the Muscle Shoals and. And, 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 and this, this type of this films. is more about a relationship too. Yeah. That's the love definitely. But I agree with you, Gus. Echo in the Canyon just skipped stones too much for you to really feel something. I, I mean, I more. loved it, but I yeah. I wanted more, especially with Tom Petty, a haunting figure that he was. Mm -hmm. And it was to sort of built as more, that. As, especially his last interview. Yeah. I thought they could have done a lot more to bring you. It was 82 minutes. Another 20 minutes would have been. It could have done a lot with finishing some circles there, mm -hmm. you know, being poetic. And not necessarily songs, just giving a sense of place. Right. I don't know. I agree. I'm going to see it again Well, tomorrow. you almost, I almost got more of a sense of place with uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as far as, like, the mm -hmm. Mama Cass party, you know what I mean? Like, oh, right. you know, you actually got a sense of it. You get a sense of L.A. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 There's, like, a high degree of verisimilitude with that. There's, right. like, you know, you, like, they're deliberately hearing... You know, um, uh, you know, radio commercials like from that time, yeah, and like yeah. sitting in traffic, and like you know, yeah, things like that. That's a great technique. That yeah, that's has. a great. Let's look. Can we talk and finish with that? Sure. Uh, sure. Let's talk about that because we didn't talk to you about Tarantino. And are you a? Yeah. I kind of have a love hate thing with him. And, 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 and <laughs> All right. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's it's more love, and I think that he brought me over. You know, courting me with this film. Again. The best kind of relationships with art and artists are complicated ones. <laughs> so this, so so I want so to hear you know going about what's on the time in Hollywood. Oh, uh, so um, I, it's a, it, it's, it's, places, it's, it's a, as it's as a, a movie. So for like for me personally, it's a movie that I think is a lot more fun to discuss than it is to watch. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to. There's so much, there's so many metatextual layers happening about how much you know about the subjects and, and how much you know. I think it's, it's very difficult for me to view this film not in context with his other sure. historical revisionist work. Yes. You know, too. So there's lots of different, like, there's so many different angles to attack it that I'm always, uh, I'm always happier to talk about the different angles Rather than the the movie itself, and I don't have like a problem, uh, you know, necessarily with uh, with the movie itself. So like when I say that it's that I enjoy talking about it more than than watching it, I just mean that um, there's the, the, there's more to, there's more to chew on when we're talking about it than than I am enjoying watching it. But that doesn't mean that I I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. What was the part that you liked the best about in terms of this film? What it, what it, what was the in terms of the revisionist, I, I, you know, obviously he has that bent in *Inglorious Bastards*. He, he takes that, um, and then also uh, *Django*. He, you know, he rewrites his ending, if you will. I'm just going to say my point of view. I think yeah, this. I, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. I was so happy that I did not want this to be a Manson. I hated the fact that they're going to do this era with Manson to. to I, I didn't think he'd glamorize him, but any kind of. Right. Love in that direction because of a man that did this heinous crime, was behind this heinous crime, was getting wedding proposals, was getting fame, you know, the mm -hmm. whole thing, cottage industry, and you have this beautiful, soulful creature, Sharon Tate, and so I was happy in his handling of this. It was almost, he was a, he was almost a, a, a priest. And a rabbi, as a filmmaker, in a lot of ways, 
because she was an angel through this film. And that was, comf- and yet they still sh- showed the sinister nature of the family, mm-hmm. which was eerie, and, and mm-hmm. you know that that hangout ology kind of, so to speak, with Andy McDowell's daughter. And right. It was it was off putting and that and uneasy. But also drops the. I mean, and this is there's a whole other element too. Uh, one of the things that was pretty interesting in uh, watching this film was that I got to watch it uh, with other people who had. Different levels of engagement with the like with the time and place. Okay. So there, were, like, I watched it with people who uh, who barely knew who you know Charles Manson was and had so like had, had no it. concept they of what was it going to this. Or more, do you think? Uh, I think I think in general they were like there was a sense that there's a little bit lost hmm. in that. Not that you can't understand sure, what's happening, sure. but like you don't have the like if, if if you understand that Charles Manson. You know, like was. like 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 was a cult leader who right. who influenced people to kill people. Right. You got everything that you need to know at a base level for this. But for people who didn't know that that it means something when that like that helter skelter was a white supremacist narrative that they were trying to enact, and that is dropped. That's a political statement that Quentin Tarantino is making. Uh, that uh, I think people. Like it's it's another it's another contextual level I think that people don't have, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I got to see people engaging with that uh, as people who like who just didn't know about Sharon Tate, who she was, uh, why these murders were important in the context of you know the '60s yeah. dying, quote unquote, matters. and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then people who also were into it, or or people who like knew a lot about you know the Tate murders and and things like that. Right. So you come out of that fe- movie feeling what? What do you come um, out of as the beguiled, person? deeply beguiled? Because I think that there's a lot of a lot of paradoxes happening yeah. in this, like happening simultaneously. And so it took me a while, and I still don't think I've figured out exactly like what the thesis he has and and what kind of like moral platitude he has with it. Um, I think it's deeply. I think it's a deeply cynical film. Um, and I think it's a very uh, like interesting film in the sense that it almost seems like a uh, uh, a cautionary tale, right? Cynical yet a love letter to a, a, a time and place as well. Uh, well, I, I, I mean, it, it is a love letter, but but it's one of those like uh, so, so the title is like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like it's it's still really yeah. like this like, like kind of fantasy. Tale, right? But and then like another paradox is that is that this fan, this fantasy is also like this kind of like you know it, there's a sort of like hyper reality happening or not hyper reality that's overdoing it but there's a sense of like uh, reality happening where like you know like the all the locations are you know are are you know picture perfect right, and like right, to, like right. to the era and things like that and so like there's there's different contrasts about uh, like that but that but that fantasy of of you know inexplicable violence and the reason why they do that violence and also why um, uh, and, 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 that, and that contrasting with uh, like the, the original plans themselves make it to be uh, like really complicated I, I, I guess I just uh, it, it's difficult to come up with like a clear thought process in this <laughs> for me well, but yeah, because, yeah. because he changes the ending and it is, it is a fantasy Right. Yeah, and and, and, and and I think that fantasy is, is very is very cynical, and I think very telling of like I, like I think what I think what he's trying to say is like I I, I made a revisionist uh, I made Django uh, Unchained uh, as a, you know there's like a revenge film uh, em, embroiled in in the the moral depravity of of, of slavery. Uh, Hitler is killed in Inglorious Bastards, and that changes the course. And there's like a moral, uh, a good moral like aspect to that too, right? And then in this one, it's like, oh, like we're playing with fantasy here. We're saving. Be something. careful about the b- between reality and fantasy. Right. Is is we sort get, of what I'm. We do have to wrap up because yeah. Radu's closing in one yeah. minute. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're, tell, tell yeah real quick, we want to hear right, you, what you think too. Oh, yeah. for once upon a time in Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, you love this scene. You love this, the scenes of the restaurant. The uh, signs that was one of your yes. takeaways. Yeah, yeah, just the the just small the things he picks out. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, get, it was like he had the um, 
the signs lighting up. Yeah, all the signs lighting up at night. It gave you that it's eerie gorgeous. feeling, but it was gorgeous to look at. Yeah, I, I love that movie. Mm. And, and I don't like Tarantino. I don't like the violence, but I love the movie. So that's mm. saying something. I love the violence in the end of it. Oh yeah, and uh, and you don't and, mind marshmallow. And to be honest with you, I love. I mean, like it's it's great. I don't want to, I don't want to. Um, you know, there there are a lot of tentpole films that are you know like by and for um, you know teenagers, and and that's great. But it's like I'm always happy to to see a tentpole film that is like directed towards adults nowadays yeah. so like sure. that's something that, uh, that is I think is like yeah like again not to disparage that that's a big no, part of it but you know right. well thank so. you Harrison yeah thank, thank you, you guys. Harrison great talk thanks yeah, as always. Yeah. for letting us sit here and talk alright see you later right. see ya bye bye, bye.